Hey, good afternoon. So, imagine you're all surgeons. It's two o'clock in the morning, and you're right before another gallbladder case. You make your incisions, place your trocars, insert your scope, and see nothing but adhesions. 30 minutes go by, and it's a bloody mess. You called your superior, but as usual, she's not around. You need to make a decision. It's time to cut the cystic duct. Or is it the cystic duct? It'll be either triumph or catastrophe, and the decision again is yours. It's all about dexterity, right? Wrong. Dr. Frank Spencer is known to have said that a skillfully performed operation is about 75% decision-making and 25% dexterity. Great decisions make great surgeons. Or in other words, it's not just about dissecting, it's about deciding. Every surgical procedure has that one thing you need to achieve, that one thing that makes or breaks a case. In gallbladder surgery, it's called critical view of safety. A study at McGill found that on our way to critical view of safety, surgeons can make as many as 75 different errors. 75. And here's the thing. The majority of these are rooted in situation awareness and decision making. Now, these are critical skills, and yet the vast majority of surgeons learn these on the fly as part of an outdated apprenticeship model. And the variability and disparity resulting from this is astounding. Now, let's face it, the majority of us in this room are not surgeons. Um, more likely, potential patients. How do we know, that when we're under anesthesia, that we're actually receiving the best possible care? So I'm a doc, but I actually learned this firsthand um, after diagnosing both, both a boss and my wife with appendicitis. I took them both to hospitals a few miles apart. The decision-making that went into treatment was very, very different, and so were the outcomes. My wife was in and out. My boss, he nearly died. A few months later, the New York Times came out with this op-ed titled, Go to the Wrong Hospital, and You're Three Times More Likely to Die. Surgeons spend decades of their lives trying to perfect their skills, achieve that peak performance capability. But as opposed to elite athletes or fighter pilots, the tools at their disposal for preparation ahead of surgery or debrief post-activity are extremely limited and equally as inefficient. The reality is that the majority of surgeons don't really have time to guide their trainees. Trainees, in turn, always complain that they don't receive enough feedback, and whatever coaching is performed is limited to the confines of the operating room. Now, here's the thing. We can change this reality. We have almost everything we need in order to do so. Almost. So every year, millions of procedures are performed under visual guidance. Yet the vast majority of these are not captured, they're not stored, and they're definitely not analyzed. Kind of mind-boggling, huh? Can you imagine your radiologist taking a busted knee MRI, your busted knee MRI, interpreting it, and then throwing the actual image to the trash? Well, that's exactly what happens in surgery today. But let's think a moment. Even if we did capture each and every minute in the operating room, which surgeon would have time to review a five-hour procedure right on the heels of coming out of one? Probably not many. Interestingly enough, the virtue of procedural review footage from surgery is well established. In fact, a recent meta-analysis showed that residents who here and now, or now and there, uh, review their procedures ahead of a case, improve their knowledge, have more satisfaction, get much more out of surgery, and this even impacts patient care. But they don't do this routinely. And so, in order to truly provide surgeons with value, in order to truly impact patient care, we need to take the vast amounts of data that, as I mentioned, are currently lost, and turn them into meaningful, palatable, and actionable insights for surgeons. And this is what we're doing at theater. So at theater, we're leveraging technology in order to truly understand what happens in the operating room. And we're doing it, magic words, AI. Seriously, we're leveraging computer vision and machine learning in order to understand what goes on in the operating room within the context of both patient and surgeon. And we do so in order to understand 
what decision-making looks like in the real world in order to then be able to disseminate best practices around the globe to anyone, anywhere. So at theater, we basically understand phases, events, decisions that continuously go on during surgery in order to pr then provide them to surgeons in a meaningful way, which they can very, very quickly analyze and respond to. This is going to be a bit graphic, but I was warned, um, so hopefully you'll be able to take it in. Imagine a soccer match. Instead of watching 90 minutes of, uh, of a match, how about just watching the highlight? Similarly, in our world, our surgical highlight reels are capable of taking even hour-long procedures and breaking them down into their most essential elements, what went well, what went wrong, and decisions that were being made. Now, our unique approach also allows us to, um, to create a clear path towards the holy grail in surgery, real-time decision support. And this is how uh, we're doing it. We're actually analyzing decisions that are constantly being made during surgery and correlating them for the first time with real-world outcomes. And so we're taking the surgical intuition, which up until now was an art, and augmenting it with actual science. Back to the graphic. So you're a surgeon again, and now it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay? You understand the value of debriefing your cases, and so you spend time doing so. In this case, you needed to, uh, you needed to make a decision. Decompress this gallbladder. It's a gallbladder, by the way. Decompress the gallbladder or not. Now, it's a seemingly innocent decision, but one that could have significant impact on both the way surgery is carried out and patient outcomes. And this is where we take it up a notch. We actually provide the surgeon with real-world data from a vast amount of real-world cases, decisions, and their consequences. And we then obviously link it to the decision that the surgeon made in the operation that they're reviewing. But what if, what if, we would actually be showing this not as a surgeon is assessing their performance, but actually in real time as these, uh, as these events are occurring, as the de these decisions need to be made before the surgeon makes the decision. And that's really what real-time decision support is all about. And so what we're doing is providing access to meaningful data in real time that is tailored to a specific procedure in a specific patient by a specific surgeon. And as we're building this level of cognition, we're actually working towards the frontier in surgery, which is cognitive, semi-autonomous, or autonomous robotic platforms that are the future of surgery. Not science fiction, this is the future. In conclusion, after everything that I've said, it shouldn't matter where a surgeon learned their craft or how many cases I've got under my belt. We can and should help surgeons become the best possible versions of themselves that they can be. And as I look around this room, I'd invite you to ask yourselves three questions. The first, wouldn't you like to, make your, to have your surgeons make better decisions? The second, wouldn't you appreciate greater transparency in this world? And the third, isn't it time to eliminate variability and disparity in surgery around the globe? If we nail the answers to these questions, we're really defining the future of surgery for years to come. Thank you.